and we are with Mr. Fuad Abubakar, the leader of the new National Vision, a well prominent young man um, instigating change and so of the social fabric in Port of Spain. Um, Mr. Abubakar, it is no doubt that every time you sit on a platform, there's an association between yourself and your father, Mr. Yasin Abubakar. For the Caribbean viewers who do not know, um, this is the son of Yasin Abubakar with the attempted coup in Trinidad in 1990. So I think that politics somehow runs somewhere in your blood, in your vein. Um, you're taking it a, a different route. Um, you're actually fighting for the youths in Laventil, fighting for grassroots people in Laventil, and for your efforts as a young man. I, I, I had to throw my hat off and say, well done. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know Miss you with a hat, so I yes. don't know it. <laughs> but thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you. So Mr. Abubakar, do you think that there's a stigma attached to you being the son of Mr. Yasin Abubakar and how does that affect your role in politics or being that of a political figure? Yeah, sure. This question has become very easy because I deal with it <laughs> every day. There are people who try to detract from the work that I am doing and very often the only thing they can rely on is the obvious fact that I am the son of Imam Yasin Abubakar. Isn't it ironic that we are doing this interview on the 27th of July, 2020? Life is planned, yeah. not by us all the time, many times by, you know, a greater power than ourselves. Anybody who is objective enough to understand that people bear responsibility for their actions. I can't hold you to account for your mother's actions or your oh father's, father's actions. True even though I, I'm not sure exactly who they are, mm -hmm. and likewise. Let's talk about the stigmatization of, of Port of Spain yeah. youths. Let's talk about the young black youth without the opportunity for, for mobilization, without reaching that self-actualization. Let's talk about the gangs. Yeah. Let's talk about the unification of both the Muslim and Rasta city. Yeah. Um, let's talk about, I, I, I am beginning to see that the social fabric of Laventil and the social fabric of Port of Spain is changing. Wouldn't you agree? Small steps in the right direction. It has been extremely difficult for the people of these neglected communities. We need to be real. If you walk East Port of Spain and you look at the conditions, if you walk Lavantil, Bitham, which people don't do, mm -hmm. the average person is going to say to you, I don't go there. I am not going there. You would see that there has been clear, continuous neglect. We want to take that community at large into a better direction. And one of the steps, obviously, is peace. We have attempted to bring groups that have been at conflict with each other for quite some time together. Yes. And it has worked successfully, but we have the understanding that unless with this peace there comes some type of prosperity, employment, um, opportunities. opportunity. And there's also a culture shift in terms of the ideology of the young black youth. There's a stigmatization, there is a correlation between the young blacks yeah. and crime within that area. But who's pushing the drugs? Yeah. Who is bringing in the guns? Is yeah. it a young black males? You sure we want us to answer that question on camera? I don't know. Yes, I do. Um, the answer is no. I can answer for you. It is not the young men and young women of those communities. Mm -hmm. they, they are pushers. They are drug pushers. They buy whatever they buy and they distribute on a very low level. Yes. They are not at the top of this food chain. Mm -hmm. They are fighting for survival. Yes. They are trying to market to whoever they can, whatever they get, to earn and to survive. And many of these young men and young women, I've worked with them before in gainful employment. The first thing they ask for is a job, a sustainable job. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be exploited. They want to work for something that is meaningful, but they are willing to work. And that is what Trinidad and Tobago must provide for its citizens. We have to stop seeing these individuals 
as separate and apart from our nation. Maybe we have to start seeing these individuals because I think we have turned a blind eye. Yeah. And then there's a vicious cycle of the culture of poverty yeah. that just keep going around in this circle, this grave circle. Yeah, most definitely. So as we said before, there are people in the middle and upper class who avoid these communities. And if you are gainfully employed, most times you try to move out of these communities. And we also do understand why, because we have to look at it from the both sides. We understand why persons of, um, of another class may avoid it because of the stigmatization, stigmatization and also the media. And then the young black, some of the young black males and the, the gang leaders, they, they are not um, promoting any positive influence right. via the education system. And you may be saying, well, Listen, these, these boys don't have a choice, but we always have the right to choose. We yeah. have the right to choose to stand up and say, listen, I am going to be a better me, a better me for this generation and a generation to come. Let sure. us start in the book bag and the books of these young ones and say, listen, we can't get mobility. Yeah. We can optimize our position, but it is time for a reset. Because it, it is not the right to put on your television day after day and see another black boy kill another black boy. And the age of crime is just going down and down. And down. 17, 14, 13, something is psychologically wrong. Sure. And until the society, until we all take responsibility because each one help one, yeah. then we can move together as a nation. Should you be successful with Port of Spain South? South yeah. How can you help these youths? to make a change. So you're thinking ahead, you're thinking like me. Um, I've been planning what I can do for them from the time that I started in this effort. Because as Kizel them. stated just now, you know, it starts in the book bag. Yeah. But then too, we are dealing with so many crack lines within these children. Yes. Yeah. And it's really hard, you know, to, to glue these crack lines back. So if we really go into the essence of their issues, there are cycles of crime. A lot of the youths, we use this term, at risk. And when we say at risk, we mean mother, maybe full-time employed, doesn't have the time to nurture and guide, father absent in jail or dead. Neglect. Neglect. A young man growing up in an environment with such trauma, pain, violence, survival. I, I, I don't even think a lot of people can comprehend what produces you know and then to really victim. keep in mind you know mental illness from childhood stems into adulthood later on yeah. so you know it's really taking the horse by the rein and really yeah. trying to make a, a change so, so what so are your my, visions for change so my pause raised just now because when i was speaking i was thinking of i remember a young man and his father was killed and i was there at the place because it, it takes a while for authorities to move a body and his son was there, his 13-year-old son, and his son was traumatized. I could obviously, yeah. crying, weeping over his father's body. And that young man said to me, two years later, you know, who, who killed my dad? You know, I want to kill that person. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's asking me, who killed him? So, I don't even know that we can understand the, the trauma and the psychological issues that inundate these communities because it's been cycles of violence for quite some time. You know, and I'm amazed, and it is only by a higher power that young men can give up their desire for vengeance, you know, and speak and come together and hug people who literally were shooting at, you know, their friends, people who they knew from before who they hadn't seen for 10 years. And if they had seen those individuals, they would have tried to kill those individuals. Because it reminds me, you know, you're holding a gun in your hand, but you know, you see yourself with so much strength, but really you're a coward. Yeah. Because you hold a weapon trying to be strong, but in reality, your mind is weak. And these youths need some sort of reassurance and empowerment. But, you know, Fraternity. I, I can Identity. add to that. Love. love. I can add to that. Love. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Love. Yeah. Um, why I can add to that is because I am a product of such community. 
Right. And when I see this, I associate myself with these community. I may not be in that community now, but I am a product of it. Right. And I remember going and, and people may say, well, we go, as I said before, education, but then sometimes we have to sit down and say, not even education. Can you imagine sometimes a child going to school with, with limited resources? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the parents don't even have the, the money or, or <laughs> the resources not even a proper lunch. Yeah. And that child may be ashamed to even go on the school feeding system because of the stigmatization among yeah, friends yeah. that you can't afford. And then there's so much, as opposed to a middle class family or upper class family that could afford the best secondary lessons classes there is on the market. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason why I started giving even lessons classes to children pre of charge. Excellent. Why? All of us can do our part. Yes. So I've highlighted over my election campaign, the schools of Port of Spain, Port of Spain South, which stems from St. James, all the way across Woodbrook, etc., to East Port of Spain. Conditions of these schools is absolutely deplorable. We live in different streams of life in Trinidad and Tobago. We are interconnected, but there is a big disconnect as well. If your foundation is not correct, your educational foundation. And that's touch on Kizal's point as well, education. You know, there are different levels of education, not only within the school's arena, but at home. Yeah. Society ha also has a part to play. Of course. You know, politicians have a part to play. You know, we deal with different aspects of yeah. education. Yeah, yeah, music, culture, But I'm, I'm, yes. I'm going to go beyond that. Yeah. Let's go, uh, let's, let's look at the goals. Yeah. Let's look at music and television. Let's look at the, the influences of socialization and social behavior. That this young youth looking to say, I want the latest Jordan. This one, I want the latest brand of clothes. This and one. All they can achieve is the image. To look rich. Time, yes. They will just And go. they're going behind and, and they, they do not realize that it is a form of slavery. Right. It is a form of mental control. Yeah. And when we as a group can, can take responsibility for our action, and when parents and fathers could understand their role, and the role of religiosity back in the home, because the home is a microcosm of a greater society. Yeah, of because when you check, sometimes the, the problems stem right there in the home. And yeah. we have to start to condition parents, young mothers, um, fathers, absenteeism, have meal groups. We, it, it is so much that needs to be done, but we can make a difference sure. one person at a time. Mm -hmm. So so part of my plan, because Kevita was asking, what can I do? So part of my plan is reworking and remitting that social fabric. So from a governmental perspective, I would want to encourage better parenting. Yeah. I'm a young parent myself. But you know, you, you made learn. a point there, you know, where you said, you know, from a political point of view. But do these people really want a political figure or do they need more of a, a person that really cares? So, so government is supposed to make the lives of its citizens better. So, so I would I want... to a holistic approach. Yeah. So I would want to implement where there is this type of teaching for parents. So if you come into the, the um, medical sector, you come into the hospitals, um, the mothers, they are expecting. I would want to incentivize and encourage you to go through a process where you learn to do, uh, to be a parent, you learn parenting. I would incentivize and I would encourage the father to be there as well. Mm -hmm. Because I understand how important that is. I, I, I understand the cost if you don't. Mm -hmm educate parents and you don't have good parents in your society because it costs us jail costs the society every single individual who's incarcerated costs us i mean the attorney general put a figure to yeah. recently hundreds of millions of dollars crime costs us our judiciary our judicial system costs us but do you think that there's a, a rise in, in crime because there are more absentee mothers now in the home? I mean, women do what they have to do. They are left with the burden, the responsibility, the blessing, I don't want to call it a burden of, of children. Even if the man goes most times, the woman the is sense. the rock. Mm -hmm. The mothers are the rocks of all the communities. So, no, I, I can't blame. They um, just do what they have to do. Of what, what, I, what I would like to see, regardless of the e election results, come August the 11th, yeah. I, I would like to see a continuum of, of that effort that you started within that area 
I would like to pledge our support as well to you in terms of the, the influence of social change um, within the young black male and females in that area. I would like to tell Port of Spain and these youths, yes, you can. Yeah. Yes, you can be something better. Believe in better. Yes, you can believe in yourself yeah. Yeah. and look and change that, they change that picture. I embody that. So yes. people have all these stigmas that they place mm -hmm. on me and I choose to rise above those stigmas. And this is what we need to start to promote, Kavita. Mm -hmm. Promote this positivity. Yeah. Because as I tell people, sometimes it's easy for us to focus on the negative, yeah. what we don't have. But can we focus a little more on the positive, positive. youths? Yeah. Can we highlight the positive youths from these areas? Yeah. Can we show other youths that listen, um, this is nobody outside of this area. This is one of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look, it's one of us and he is doing it. We and are, she's doing it. We are a resilient people. Yes, we Even are. Even with all the pressure and all the difficulty and the harsh circumstances, we still show love. I am amazed by Lava until I am amazed by Port of Spain South. Mr. Fuad, coming back to community leaders in these areas, if we can have an outreach to these leaders, knowing that they have influence and use that influence in a positive way, um, if the politicians could identify some of these community leaders and reach out to them because sometimes they are acting as fathers to the fatherless. Yeah. Some of them, they, <laughs> they are acting, um, they are standing in between that gap. Now, if we focus our attention to these leaders and ask these leaders to help us, let us paint a different picture for Port of Spain and by and large the rest of Trinidad and Tobago, then maybe we are heading one step more in a better direction. Yeah, I agree with you. The responsibility that these community leaders have is immense. Well, in closing, Mr. Abubakar, you know, when asked the question as to how you would help these youths of yeah. Port of Spain South, one thing came to mind and it struck me, you know, replacing neglect with love. Yeah. And those youths need to remember that there is something inside of them that is greater than any obstacle. So thank you, Mr. Abubakar, for being a part of the Live Wire. Thank it was a pleasure much. having you on board. Thank you yes. very much for having me. And I look forward to doing some more work with you all because I feel, I feel your vibes. <laughs> you feel a good energy. I feel a good energy. Thank you.